Not many cars could dust the Lamborghini Aventador in price and speed, but the Bugatti Veyron can do just that. It's a high-performance vehicle that is worthy of a high-performance tutorial. This video will turbocharge your knowledge of drawing by breaking down the Veyron into simple, easy steps. You don't need Geico. You just need a pencil and some paper. Let's begin. Step 1. Make a rectangle that's 11 inches by 6 inches. Then, split the 11 inch side into two parts that are 5.5 inches each. Step 2. Make the shape for the windshield. Notice its placement within the two squares. 3. Add the shape that I just added. Notice its placement within the rectangle. Step 4. Add the oval shape. Step 5 is the most difficult step. There are six new shapes. Start with the headlight shape, which is even with the top of the oval shape. Then add the other shapes. Notice that only one shape goes below the line at the bottom of the oval shape. Step 6. Make the rectangle below the oval shape. Step 7. Add the shape that looks like an equal sign in bubble letters. With step 8, we're finally over to the other box. Because of perspective, the size of the new shape is going to be bigger than the equal part on the other side of the car. Step 9. Add the headlight. Step 10. Add the wheel. Step 11. Add the door. Due to perspective, notice that it gets more narrow as the shapes start going back into the distance. Step 12. Add the shape above the door. Step 13. Add the thingies. Step 14. Add the ice cream cone thingies that make the car go really fast. Take your time with step 15. It's tricky, but if you got the rest of your placements correct, you should be able to get this rather easily. Once again, use the box to gauge where you're going to put your lines. Step 16. Add the wheel and the sporty thingy. Hey, welcome to the shading part. I hope that uh, the 16 steps before this were uh, easy for you. Um, I've never used the boxes before. Uh, it's kind of an extension of the gridding technique, uh, which of course is effective. Um, you know, I hope that that worked for you as well as the steps. Um, so what I'm going to do here, I know it looks like it's going super fast right now, um, and uh, if it is, um, I'll upload a video that uh, will slow it down, but uh, what I want to do in this video is to, uh, I'm actually going to stop it. I'm going to go regular speed in about five minutes, but to start off, um, I, I want to show you how I build up just regular tones, and I'm going to use the um, HB pencil, uh, 2H pencil, um, really to start. Now, the HB pencil is the same as a number two pencil. Um, a 2H pencil is like my new, my new toy. I mean, it's a $1 toy, but uh, it's, a, it's a really cool um, tool to use because you really can build up tone slowly. Um, whereas, you, even if you press lightly with an HB pencil, uh, you'll still see some of the, uh, you know, the tones building up a little bit too fast. I'm going nice and super slow with the 2H. I always ignored the H pencils uh, for all of the years that I've been drawing, but, um, you know, I'm not making that mistake now. Anyway, let me describe what's going on. I'm slowly building up the tones, and then when I get to the point where I'm doing the individual parts of the car, um, the wheels, the, um, the hood, uh, the doors, you know, I will slow it down. But, you know, I kind of want you to try uh, to 
do exactly what I'm doing right now. Um, it might take some practice. If you have a, uh, a 2H pencil or just an H pencil, uh, that would be fantastic. But I'm slowly building up the tones. Pause the video at different points uh, just to um, try to match what I'm doing. But I'm not going to get super bold until, um, until I stop the video. And you'll have to see what I mean. In other words, the, uh, the high maintenance shading, that's going to happen uh, a little bit later. Uh, and that's going to be at a very, very slow speed. So we're going to go um, do the basics right now, the, uh, you know, the building up of the tones uh, just on a super fast speed. Then we're going to stop it. So uh, you're going to see like the really detailed teaching then. Um, that uh, shiny pencil that I'm using, uh, that is... Um, that's also an HB pencil. It's just the one where you can put the lead in yourself. I'm using the eraser with that. Um, I've tried a kneaded eraser over the years, but um, that has a really small eraser, and it's helped me carve out uh, highlights in certain spots, uh, which I find to be really helpful. If you uh, do this successfully, um, or even if you don't, uh, share it to my Facebook page. Um, you know, I have a presence on Google Plus now, and uh, I'm trying to get in the habit of, like, really uh, checking it off. And so, you know, I love to see the work that you guys send in. Um, it's always motivating. Uh, so, yeah, if you wind up doing this, please, um, you know, send it in. Okay, so there I'm using a 2B pencil. And I'm just creating a shadow that I'm going to edit a little bit uh, as we go on. Um, so, so far I've used three pencils. I've used a 2H, an HB, uh, and a 2B. 2B, of course, is the darkest one of the three. Um, but I'm starting to mark off, uh, you know, some of the darker parts. And we're about uh, three minutes or so away from me going regular time with the video. And I really want you guys to see... Um, you know, some of the finishing techniques that I have. Anybody, anybody can build up tones, um, you know, just by doing cross-hatching, line next to line next to line. But um, the real artistry in this uh, happens in the later parts when you are, you know, moving stuff around and, like, really trying to uh, uh, get the edges. Um, you know, so we go from the tones, uh, I'm sorry, we go from the shapes to the edges, and as soon as I start, um, you know, going towards the edges, that's when I'm going to stop the video. Yeah, so right now I'm still perfecting the form, and I'm getting basic tones, just simple basic tones. Um, as we go on, um, we, we look to the edges, and uh, we perfect the edges. Um, I've been wanting to say this. Um, I want to thank you guys. I got uh, recently 15 million views. So, uh, you know, thank you guys for uh, coming back and, you know, leaving all of those great comments uh, that motivate me to keep making these videos. Um, it also helps me to see uh, what you guys want. Um, this was an old request, um, yeah, Bugatti uh, Veyron, but um, every time that I look back, um, I tend to see uh, this voted up. Uh, so... Yeah, keep, uh, you know, keep putting those requests in. Uh, it might not be checked right away, but it will be checked, um, especially in my more recent videos, uh, because I've got over 250 videos now. Um, I kind of need you guys to put uh, your requests on the more recent videos, because uh, I want to check as many as I can, but uh, obviously there's only so many hours in the day. All right, so I actually thankfully changed the camera. Um, that camera was a uh, pretty much like a webcam uh, that I had pointing downwards. But uh, you could see this better. This is um, my regular camera that I use. Looks a lot different. Uh, looks a lot emptier with this one. Now a lot of this is uh, flat right now. And what you're going to see in real time in a few minutes is how exactly to do this without flattening it, and it's all of these subtleties that you really have to see. So this is going to be one of my longer videos, but I think it'll be worth it. It goes for 37 minutes. And we're at about the 10-minute um, the mark right now. But from uh, 
about 11.45 all the way to the end. It is just going to be me shading at a very slow pace. Um, and I did the narration right while I was drawing. So you could know exactly what is going on in my mind while I draw. Um, the chassis uh, inside behind the windshield, you know, you don't really have to worry about extreme details. You have to worry about light and dark. Uh, this gave me real appreciation for the designers of the uh, Bugatti Veyron. Uh, it's really got so many curves to it, uh, like real subtleties. Like if you notice the area over the tire uh, that I'm leaving in highlight, um, that just keeps going um, and it goes uh, towards the front of the car and turns and there's all of these crazy ridges that happen. So now we are getting ready to go slow speed and I'm going to talk you through uh, what I'm doing. You're going to see me uh, use different tools uh, such as that one. Uh, that was a tortillion um, or a, uh, a blending stump, some people call it. In there I'm trying to get the textures right. In the photo reference there was uh, you know, it, it was a vent and I don't want to get every single detail of that vent. Um, that would be a little cray, as they say, uh, but you know I want to get I want to hint towards the texture. So right now, in about 20 seconds, it is going to go to the narration that happened while I was shading it. You guys are going to have to let me know if you like it uh, fast or slow. Here we go. So this is a really important part in here. Um, it is right by the wheel and it turns. We want to make it believable. So I uh, want, it looks kind of flat right now, quite honestly. So um, we're going to use tones. Uh, I'm using a 2H pencil right now. We're going to use tones to make it look rounded. And what happens is in here, it kind of gets um, a little bit bent in. Um, you know, it's inverse. Um, this is pointing out and it's highlighted and we have the wheel which is going to be very dark over here so I'm going to switch to my 2B pencil slowly develop the tones and what we're going to do with the shadow you will see um, but I'm doing hatching um, it's tough because the wheel um, ends right about here one plane of the tire ends here and then the other plane is illuminated and is in high contrast and I'm going to try to make it a little bit different in tone uh, I'm going to try to make the shadow a little bit different in tone. I'm going to try to make it a little bit lighter. And even though this is in highlight, I could always go back with an eraser. So this is going to be dark in here. And that's going to be in highlight. We want it to be sharp. So this edge needs to be sharp. not turned enough yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tortillion and make a blend. And the bottom of the car, at least that's facing the light, is going to be in highlight. And as it gets to over here, um, we could put it back into shadow. So I'm going to do the shadow first under here. And I'm using a 2B pencil for that. I'm going to 
try to make sure I have a nice solid edge there. And I'm going to take my 2H and I'm going to hatch over at this. And this is going to push it back. See? And some more. Yeah, so that is pushed back. You just want to sharpen the edge a little bit. And I could even push this back. Because this is a totally different plane than this. I'm using a 2H pencil. I've come to really appreciate them. Um, I don't care what level artist you are, you're always learning. And um, I would ignore the H pencils for the longest time, but uh, they're really helpful tools because they are so slow at building up the tones. Whereas if I was doing this with a, um, say, a 4B pencil, it would get lost right away. I'm going to go to my 6B pencil and I want some really dark darks in here. So I'm going to go right in and what I could do, like I said I want it to be a slightly different shadow, I'm going to pull this using the tortillion. create an edge. And I'll zoom out and let's see how it looks. Much better. Alright, so I'm going to zoom into other parts later. In fact, let me do the door. So the door is going to be in light compared to the front. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to move my slip sheet right under here. Let me get the one dark area. Make sure the shape is right. This is the seat belt right here. And this is a 2B pencil I'm using. Shapes on the inside don't matter so much. Um, just if you give it a variety of tones that helps move the eye around. I just look at the general shape um, and just see how I am. I'm going to go back to the 2H pencil and I'm going to try to push this back. It's not in full highlight. And it'll create too much contrast um, if I left it like that. So I pushed that back. And for the door, I'm just going to build it up a little bit more. Anything that I add that's too much, I can just take away a little bit later. And I'm shading with the 2H pencil, which is nice and slow. Gonna leave a highlight at the top of the door, but this is rounded. So we have to deal with it like a rounded shape at the top. There's going to be darker area. I could come in with my tortillion. I'm not going to press too hard. And that rounded that. 
at the bottom we'll round this and now I could go back with my eraser pull out some highlights These will be in line with the ones that we have on the wheels. And now I'm seeing that I could even go a little bit darker on the door. To really bring out that highlight. So at the bottom we'll go darker. Now I want to focus on this area right down here. We'll get back to the wheel. That wheel is really bothering me now. Yeah, let me not do that. Let me focus on this. Um, so this has a shape. Kind of turns in. So I'm going to take my eraser. And we have a darker area that goes in like that. It's like a triangle in here, see? I'm going to do the same thing in the bottom for the shadow. And be really careful here. Same thing, 2H pencil. Let me push some of this back. Let me first thin it out. I could thin it out with the darker pencil. 2B should do. It's almost like a pinstripe that goes across. Let's see how accurate I could be. Come on Merrill, don't screw this up. There we go. Now that we have that pinstripe there, now we can take the 2H pencil, push it back. And there's also a pinstripe on the top. So there we have that. Okay. So now let's do this wheel. Ugh, bothering me. I'm gonna go a little higher with this. Here's where you move away from the photo reference. I'm gonna put this in. And let's define the wheel a little bit better. So here's one plane. Gonna make sure that this is in a circle or an oval, egg shape, I guess. And put that in. Gonna outline that, give that an edge. Let me take my 6B pencil 
and we are going in extreme dark here so let me just press hard put it in create an edge and it gets thinner on this side and then we deal with the contrast okay now here's the problem we're having this is not this light there's highlights to it that are this light but we could do the same thing we will actually go in with the 6B pencil do some hatching right in there now first let me change my mind on that let me do a outline right at the edge of the rim Now I'm going to do my hatching. Now take my eraser right at the top here. Pull a highlight out. And also at the bottom. Pull a highlight out. Now I could take 2H pencil again, push it back. I'm going to actually hatch over the wheel here, the rims that is, hatch again, and now go back, get my eraser, I'm going to pull out some parts. So this is going to be in full highlight, I'm going to have a spot here, spot here, spot there. spot there there we go a little bit better for those of you who are hardcore who are watching this uh, I admit these are not perfect wheels but you know what when you back up and you look at it um, it looks a heck of a lot better okay so let's keep going on this. I'm going to keep it panned out for a little bit so you can see. A lot of things look up look a lot different up close than they do far away. So we got to keep that in mind. Um, let me go in with my blender. I'm going to push this down a little bit. When I say this, I mean the shading. See what that did? And over here. And same thing on the other side. Let's really build this up. An area of contrast. If we want to get fancy, I'll take the, um, the slip sheet, which stops me from smudging it, right along the edge, going to create a highlight over in here, move the eye around, over in here I'm going to lighten this,
push that back. Ignore what I just did. Yes, I used my fingers. Fine, you caught me. Sometimes it's the best tool to use. Alright, so we have an edge here. Right over here I'm gonna pull out a highlight. So my rule with using the fingers is you don't want to do it early in shading because the uh, oils of your hand get into the page. It really does. If you're doing it on your last layer, that's a little bit different though. And this part I'm looking to finish. The little things are bothering me. When you're finishing something up, you want edges to be right. So I just adjusted that. All right, so let's go in, let's do the same thing we did for the other wheel, hopefully a little bit better. Gonna sketch in a few shapes in the same pattern. I kind of alternated short and long circles. And this one's a little bit more foreshortened. So it gives us a little creative license. Let me go really dark back here. And the shadow's a little bit different, it goes right in. But there is an edge that we're going to have to account for, which I'll put in right there. Soften the edge. Now I'm going to go to H. Simple hatching. Finish, I'm going to use a paintbrush. It kind of pushes everything together, neutralizes it. Gonna take off the edge of that. I'm gonna use a bigger eraser now. Let's pull out some highlights and then we're done. Now you see there's a uniformity to um, where the highlights go. 
goes across the midsection right about here. Strong light over in here, in the back. Just trying to move the tones around. I'm giving it a few glances, just seeing where I could make a few improvements. Gonna go full highlight in here. And anything extra we take out. And that's all, folks.